It's Obsidian and Readwise. It really is that simple for the most part. We'll discuss the nuances of this in just a second, but just because you're watching this video, I wanted to give you a free gift. If you've struggled with choosing the right PKM app or note-taking app for yourself, head on over to thinkeffective.co slash 5Q. Here I'm giving you for free a lesson from the upcoming Obsidian Made Simple version two launch in a module that I did called Intro to PKM, where I go through the five questions that you need to ask yourself in order to choose the right PKM app. So if you're interested in getting that, head on over to thinkeffective.co slash 5Q. There will also be a link in the description below. With that, let's get into it. Now, there's been a lot of talk about PKM systems and workflows and things of like that. If you've hung around the PKM space on Twitter, there's tons of diagrams that people are sharing. I personally think it can get a little complicated to try to process and distill all this information. In fact, you might even feel a little like this guy here, trying to organize your notes all over the place. Or maybe you're right here in the middle on this, where simpletons use apple notes if you're kind of figuring things out you've got this crazy setup but then if you're really a master you're using apple notes well i would put obsidian in this spot for one uh, but for two there's a lot of truth to this it's really easy to over complicate our systems because we want to tie everything together and we have to have this place where we have everything that's going and we have to have a place for everything well, frankly, a lot of us just don't have either time or energy to figure all that out, or maybe there's really just a level of diminishing returns for do that. I've been in that camp myself, which is why my PKM system is actually relatively simple. So let's get into that a little bit. I split my PKM system into three sections, learning, documents, and then productivity. I really think all three of these aspects are a part of a PKM system. But the one that I care about the most in a PKM, personal knowledge management sense, is this learning side of things. I have kept it really, really simple. And it's because I found some helpful, practical, useful tools that allow me to do so. I do nearly all of my reading of books on Kindle. And so I have Kindle highlights set up. It's great. I love the fact that I can take my Kindle be disconnected from my phone, even though you can read Kindle books on phone. I love the fact that it feels like you're reading a book, even though it's in a digital format. Amazon's really like knocked it out of the park with the Kindle format over the last 10 years, I really have to say. So read on Kindle, highlight stuff, and then all of those highlights get automatically dumped into Readwise. Now, I will say I have been a part of their closed beta using the Readwise reader service that is opening up soon from the sounds of it to more of an open invite only beta. Um, this will be a really nice thing to get your feet wet with if you get a chance to, because that's where I put all the articles and PDFs at this point that I'm highlighting and reading. But the beauty of this, one, is that Readwise allows you to surface these highlights daily, so you get a Readwise daily review, you can go through them. This has really been great to help keep stuff top of mind. If you wanna get a little bit more into how I'm using Readwise, check out the video in the corner here that I've done on why Readwise has changed my life in terms of learning and productivity and PKM. But the reason Readwise is in the middle here isn't just for that spaced repetition. It's because of the syncing. It takes all of the pain away from getting these highlights out of your Kindle and into Obsidian, because that's where I work with these. If you've hung around the channel here at all before, pretty regularly I do live streams called Think With Me Thursdays, where I usually am just noodling in my Obsidian vault, taking a look at notes from books that I have highlighted and then transforming them. And so Kindle highlights go through Readwise and get synced into my Obsidian vault and then that's there where I turn them into permanent notes or maybe they get transformed or consolidated into some kind of an idea, so maybe in a, something that I'm working on, a video idea, a project idea somewhere down the road, and that might get loaded off into some system elsewhere. But literally, it is that simple for me for my PKM system. But there are other elements of PKM that I don't feel that Readwise and Obsidian handle all of that well. 
And that's where, in the documentation side of things, this is where DevonThink comes in. In a recent Think With Me stream, we got into a talk about replacements for Evernote. I used to be a big Evernote user probably 10, 12 years ago. I loved their service. I paid for it. I loaded up all my documents in it because really there is no replacement for Evernote for its OCR cross-platform availability of syncing documents to have that file cabinet that's with you wherever you are. Now, as you probably know, if you've been around Evernote for any length of time, the software development has not really been that great. Uh, it can be difficult for that team to continue building a quality, reliable application. Uh, Cross-platform has been really wonky and weird. Some platforms seem to take priority over others. They have, have had different designs on others, which I know they've recently remedied. Uh, but now they're trying to be more of a teamwork collaboration tool, which every single tool out there seems to be heading that direction these days, which is kind of unfortunate for single individuals like us who like to use these productivity tools because they tend to be really skewed in their features towards collaboration. And a lot of times we don't need that extra stuff. The only replacement that I have found that does as good of a job as Evernote as storing documents so you can hook up a Fujitsu scan snap or other kind of scanner and drop it right into it, have it OCR'd automatically, have a nice organization system and be able to access it literally anywhere you want, is DevonThink. Now, DevonThink can be a bit of an expensive application. The standard version is $99, pro version is $199, and then the server, which most people probably don't need that, is $500. Plus, you have a mobile app that you have to buy and maintain a subscription to as well to keep that working. But when you put that in light of how much Evernote Premium is, which is around $80 a year, um, you pay for itself basically in two years if you purchase DevonThink. And the team at uh, Devon Technologies has been putting a lot of effort into making DevonThink better over the last few years. I know I really resisted using DevonThink for a long time because it still had those early years Mac OS Aqua interface style. It didn't really... Uh, update its UI. It's the same reason why I don't like mail clients like MailMate is because they just feel old and kludgy and I just don't like that. I need to have something aesthetic. But with the Devon Think 3 update that came out a while back, they changed all that. Now, the one downside about Devon Think is that it is only available on Mac, iOS, and iPad OS. And so there's a bit of a challenge with that. But for where my system stands right now, that's really the only place that I need it. And so DevonThink is the place that I'm storing all of my documentation. If I have any paper that's coming in and getting scanned, I have a Fujitsu scan snap scanner over there on the other side of the room. Uh, that goes directly into an inbox folder that I have indexed in DevonThink. I don't store any of these documents directly inside of DevonThink. Um, I have it set up so that the folders are stored in iCloud Drive so that I can share them more easily with my wife. So if I move stuff around in DevonThink, they get moved around in iCloud Drive. It's really handy how that works, um, but then it allows me to access those original files right in the file system. I know the great thing about DevonThink is that it doesn't mess with the original file format too. If you drag out a PDF, you're gonna get a PDF. If you export from DevonThink, you're gonna get the original file format that you put it into the software in, which was not the case with Evernote. It's not the case with other apps that I've used as well. And so this just makes life a heck of a lot easier if for some reason I need to take something out of the software, if say my wife needs to get access to it, or just flat out if I decide to move to a different platform in the future. And then the last side of things is productivity. This is where some changes have been happening recently. And I just did a video on what you do if you've run into a time where you don't want to use productivity systems anymore. I've recently kind of walked through that myself. I just kind of hit this bout of burnout and I realized I needed to go back to my foundations, things that have worked well for me. And there are three main tools that I'm using in this to manage this information. Uh, Notion is a big one. We just started adopting to use Notion uh, in my household, as well as uh, I use this to manage a lot of things for effective. It's just a great spot to keep big picture stuff. There's a real structure hierarchy to Notion, but it's also flexible enough that you can make it really do whatever you want it to do. And so it's great. 
I think for a lot of the big picture life or household management tasks uh, or project management type things that I engage with it for. On a task level, I have actually been experimenting with using OmniFocus again. I don't know why this is the case, but OmniFocus just kind of feels like one of the most powerful tools for this on the market. I know that I've talked about in the past uh, and others like Curtis McHale have talked about how OmniFocus really seems to be getting a little long in the tooth and not really keeping up with other productivity software. I would totally agree with that in terms of user interface. It's quite clunky, it can be really complicated. But there's really nothing I think that can compare to OmniFocus in terms of the power um, with the ability to clip things into it, to directly link to specific projects or tasks, the different perspectives that you can have, the different tagging that you can do, the filtering that you can do inside of the software. It really just is second to none as far as in terms of that. Todoist has some of the same filtering capabilities, but they're a little kludgy to work out. Um, the linking in Todoist is weird. The linking in Things is great, but Things is much more of a uh, guardrailed type software. You can do a lot of things with it, but there's a specific workflow for it, whereas OmniFocus, you can kind of flex the workflow to be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. And then lastly, I use a Leuchtturm 1917 notebook as a sort of bullet journal. I'm trying to figure out yet where this fits in with the task manager. Um, I really feel like I need to do journaling on paper. Uh, bullet journal is great for this because I don't have to do long form journaling. I could just do bullets inside of it. Uh, but the other thing too is that it's great for capture. It's great for writing out down ideas, just kind of fleshing things out because I don't really like to do that on uh, digitally unless I have to. And then the other thing that it's really great for too, I think is like day to day planning. It's not great for week to week planning, like when I'm going to do things because the bullet journal just doesn't really seem to do that all that well, unless you do some like weekly spreads, which I'm just really not into doing that myself. Uh, but I think it's a really helpful tool to have in my arsenal because there's just something calming and peaceful for me about using paper. I love fountain pens. I like, like nice writing instruments as well. And so it gives me an excuse to engage with those. So with that, those three sections, learning, documents, and then productivity. That's really the state of my PKM system right now. I have intentionally tried to keep this as simple as possible because I just don't need complexity. And most people don't either. Now, part of the reason why I have leaned on OmniFocus is because I'm starting uh, a new venture here soon with a new employer. And so as a result of that, I wanted to make sure that I had some of the getting things done style power that OmniFocus has. A lot of my time over the last few years has really been spent more in maker mode versus manager mode. And I, I really feel like there's gonna be much more of a pull on that manager side of things for me uh, upcoming. And so I wanna make sure that I have tooling available to me that can flex to that as well uh, versus just solely being in the content production or software development space where I'm head down on one thing for a long block of time. Uh, and so those are considerations to make too if you're building a PKM system for yourself in the future. Well, that's really it. I hope you found this overview of my PKM system in 2022 to be helpful. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. It really does help other people find this video. Now, I wanna remind you of the free gift from the beginning of the video, my guide on how to pick the right PKM app for yourself. And if you wanna get that for free, head on over to thinkeffective.co slash 5Q. Again, the link will be in the description. My name is Justin from Effective. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, stay effective.